That is the sound of a vengeful and dark crow. Hello, and welcome you to the Crow Show. What do you know? I'm no, uh, Mitchell, and I'm happy to have you here, as I'm sure all of our guests are happy to have you here as well. If this is your first time joining us, where the heck have you been? Uh, we talk about movies, and the movie that we're going to be talking about today is none other than The Crow. If you're not familiar with The Crow, it is the story of a, uh, a man who's... Uh, he, he, he watches some people die, he ain't too happy about it, and then he gets inspired, and boom, next thing you know, he's the crow, baby! Look out! Ain't nobody seen a character like this in all of cinema or comic books, mind you. But let's see what the others have to say. I'm going to bring on our panel of phenomenal individuals, starting with the beautiful and talented man of mystery, Mr. Ralph Tedesco. Ralph, how are you today? Hello. Hello. So happy, first question. Happy Crow Day. Love. Uh, love. So first question for you. The Crow yes. is a, a musician, spoiler alert, who dies at the hand of some street thugs. Whoa. I Whoa. said spoilers. <laughs> I, 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 I quick threw that one I'm out there. Kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Now, does the story change if he's a different type of musician, i.e., what if he's an accordion player? Does he still become no, the crow? It's still the same. It's, it doesn't matter. He's the. It crow. doesn't matter. He's the crow. Because I feel, I feel like the the main character had some, you know, you know, predetermined uh, vibes that well, kind of they lent themselves to a crow. We can we can discuss this with the with the troop with the with the group, I suppose. Yeah. Um, All right. I should I should show you my crow. I have a crow on my arm, but it's not from the movie. So it's a different crow. Um, people that think did not know. that it has to do with the movie sometimes, which is disappointing. We can tell them it's a raven, and you're just a really big Edgar Allan Poe fan. Yes, that has also come up before. Speaking of Edgar Allan Poe, let's bring on the girl who thought that there was a reference to crows in the Raven poem. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Casey. Hi, Casey. How are you? I yeah. thought they said it at the beginning. I thought there was multiple birds mentioned, but it was just, it, apparently it was just the raven. And and the movie quote is bad now. And my score <laughs> has has gone down. No, bit. I didn't mean I to give, bring the score down. Casey one crow out of five. Oh, just, that's fair. Just that kidding. Fair. I give Casey a five crow rating. Aww. Five crows, that's unheard of. That's a flock. I, I never give five crows out. <laughs> You got a you got a flaming five flock, Casey. Who, who else do who else do we have backstage? Any surprises tonight? Um, coming from not a airport waiting room, uh, <laughs> the extremely talented and settled in, snug and safe, Mr. Brian O'Hallerhan. Brian, how are you today? Yeah, good to see you. Although full disclosure, I literally am packing right after this show to go to an airport. So uh, you're catching me. In between airports. That's fine. You're a traveling man. You got to stay in the air. He's on the road. By the way, a oh, cluster of crows is known as a murder. A murder. Nice. murder. He's a murder. A murder dirter. Mm -hmm. A murder dirter. That's one of those Snapple facts. I thought I had it. I no, it's, away, but... it's, it's, it's called education. You don't have to drink Snapple to know that. I, you, can, instead, you can find that I in drink... books, people. <laughs> That's how, yeah, but you, Noah got his education through Snapple, Brian. Please. Be Did you know that Snapple kangaroos uh, can hop backwards? Thanks, Bam. Snapple. Snapple facts. They Actually, on, uh, one yes. more, two more references. They should be a sponsor. Yeah, I hope so. I think that we got to come get them into on a. Board. Let's get them on board. Speaking of getting on board, let's bring on board everybody's favorite. Sh uh, shining star uh ladies and gentlemen it's crystal star <laughs> hey guys Hello. hey can y'all hear me yes yeah okay, you sound cool. fantastic <laughs> crystal crystal was with me in fan expo dallas for those yeah. of you oh how was that brian i only went because i was promised brian would be there and wow. i went there and ralph was like he's not here listen i, like, I drove all this way <laughs> Trust yeah, me. I didn't, I didn't uh, come to see you, Ralph. I came to see Brian. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to be there. Trust me. Uh, me and Jeff and Trevor all wanted to be there. Uh, but the high honchos pulled out. And then the 
show people said, let's bring them all next year. So see you in Dallas next year. Trust me, I want to be there. I was highly disappointed when I got the news. As Trust well. me, though, Dallas uh, outside of the convention. Mm. Mm. All right. The city. There you go. I, I don't do anything city. here. The really city's in. Right. Well, it was you guys that once again I was coming to see as well. Mm -hmm. Not so much the city of Dallas, but I will be there next year. This weekend, if you want, come to Denver. I'm in Denver. Denver. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Who else we got? Who else we got? Uh, needing no introduction because she's phenomenal in every right of her own. Welcome, Marilyn Gigliotti. Well, thank you. Thank Night you. Hill Bell. I like it. Hi, guys. Marilyn, love. love. I love your background. Thank you. Both this way. There you go. Everyone saw it. it. San Antonio is better. So is Austin, Gus. Just after Austin's, true. Austin's the best. San Antonio. Austin, I live in Austin there. now. I'm an Austinite. I'm, I'm official. So I'll, I'll go vouch oh. for Austin. Speaking of official, let's bring on the official cover artist for Ooh. Everything Movie Club. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the stream, Miss Sun Kumanaki. Ooh. Sun, how are you? Yeah. I thought you said Movie Club for a second. Oh, and what can we can we start a booty club round? We will be starting booty club next month. <laughs> nice. Uh, so we'll be doing all the covers. <laughs> you can get a subscription to the booty covers soon. Yeah. Why not? Once a month booty. Why not? <laughs> Twice the work Roll for me. I have to do the back and the front. Back and oh, we could do a connecting. Sun. Ooh, Ooh, like a like a mad magazine thing. Yes. <laughs> That's I don't know. How would how do those grade out? If if you fold bend them together, how do they grade? Is that like a oh. you still get a 9.8 if you folded it? No, you would not get know. a 9.8. I don't know how the grading works. <laughs> Dang. Don't fold your covers, people. Don't listen to Noah. <laughs> um, I almost well, got him. Welcome everyone. We have a crowded show tonight. This is this is a. A lot of a lot going on here. We got the whole fam damnly. Um, thanks for joining us. We had the crow this month, which was a pleasant a, a pleasant um, turn of events for me because I, I did see this uh, many times years back. Who was anybody here a first time crow? Really? Just just the kids. I might as well. I might as well have been though because. I honestly didn't remember anything about it. Uh, and I think I only did see it once. Can't even remember how long ago. Really? Um, I've seen so, it so yeah. many freaking times. Interesting. Interesting. And I saw it in the theater. Who else saw it in the theater? Love. Um, <laughs> did it come out in 94? Is that right? 94? Yep. Yes. 94. Yeah. And and we're we're kind of going back in time, aren't we? Because we're back in the 1950s, aren't we? Right. Uh, I love you. Maybe, yeah, apparently we are. <laughs> ah, I see. Um, look at Marilyn. <laughs> throwing out some some zingers. Some. I love it. I love it. it. Political it. zingers coming through. <laughs> look out! Look out! Um. So, what? Uh. I guess what we're sorry, no, you start. You, you oh no, like, so let's see. Here. So here's the thing. I, I some of our, our past movie clubs, I, I feel like you know, conversation always fantastic, but it's it seems like it's all over the place. So I, I attempted to make a crow flow chart. Ooh, if you can see flow. that. I so like this is the flow. yeah, this is the, the crow chart flow chart. So we, we've got our main cast of characters up here. Let's see, there you go. So we got, you know, protagonist, the crow, got him right there. Girlfriend, <laughs> Shelly. Sarah, who's just a friend. She's not the daughter. She's not the sister. She's just a friend. Darla Moore, which is a funny name as in Moore. I want more of that, Darla. And then you got the, the Dean from The Wire uh, and the fourth Ghostbuster. Then you got the crew right here. And then you got that guy. He runs the pawn shop, and you can't forget all those baddies. <laughs> so I, I think I think that might serve as a, a way to 
move the story along, find our relation to characters, who does what to whom, I don't know. You'll have to stay tuned to find out. And See, <laughs> now the younger audience is going to be like, yo, man, couldn't you have put that in a TikTok? <laughs> Casey even asked me. Casey was like, do you Casey, want to digitize that? Why are and we I not doing a dick TikTok? I'm going to say TikTok. What? He's so used to it. Call it a dick talk? <laughs> By accident, I did call it a dick <laughs> Which is now, I, I, I'm going to fucking copyright that dick talk. You it. better do it. If it hasn't already. <laughs> and, uh, dick talk. On the, there are guys the, who love to send those pics. Yeah. <laughs> and guys who love to see them. Um, <laughs> well, thank you for that beautiful flow chart. Are you going to no. start a Pro TikTok, chart. Ralph? What's that? Are you going to start a dick talk? I might. I might start right. to Let us know. Let us know. I'll, I'll have one follower. <laughs> Sadly. Um, oh, my hi. dad came just in time. Hi, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Casey's dad. We're bringing, we were going to bring Casey's dad on for Father's Day, but we didn't. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um, Is that on the TikTok? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <you get this? laughs> Let's get back on track. Sorry. Uh, back on track. All right. So, uh, The Crow based on a 1994 comic, starts out with a beautiful, what I imagine are like, like miniatures. It had like a very kind of like Blade Runner, uh, you know, swooping in over top of the it, fire and flames. I felt like it was like really Tim Burton-esque. Was it Tim um, Burton? It was yeah. not Tim Burton. Very Tim Burton. It was, I didn't realize, I guess at the time, I've seen this movie so many times, I didn't realize it's Detroit. I forgot. And it yeah. I didn't remember that it either. It doesn't look anything like Detroit. No, it's just it's, a it was filmed in North Carolina. <laughs> okay. okay, and so about that, real quick, uh, there are no unions there, correct? And, no, that, not um, North Carolina, no. Okay, that makes sense. In fact, actually, when I was reading in the details, um, it was a right to work state, so there were a lot of corners cut. Yes, so yes. there were a lot were about of um, mishaps. Yeah, they were talking about working like 18 hour days. And I was like, where was this filmed? That is illegal. <laughs> All right. Well, should we use yeah. that as a, a jumping point to, to squash the elephant in the room? The, yeah. Because uh, that, that is a, a, a good the segue into <laughs> You got it. So famously, Brandon Lee, for anyone who, who doesn't know the main character, the guy who plays the crow, uh, died with only three days left of filming because yeah. of a mishap with a prop gun. And like Marilyn and Crystal were saying, it sounds like a lot of corners were cut. Somebody who wasn't the main props guy was like, ah, yeah, I'll, I'll handle this gun, no problem. You go home early. And oh, then wow. didn't go, yeah. It, it was one of those, like, reading it about it and just seeing yeah. how, like, avoidable it was. It's yeah. pretty depressing. I don't know how avoidable, so I don't know where I stand on this, but with the Lee family, um, you know, uh, Brandon Lee is Bruce Lee's son. I, I figured most of us knew that. And ironically, his dad's last movie was actually him getting killed on a movie set mm -hmm. by a loaded gun. Um, when yeah. I was like, whoa. Um, so yeah, when Brandon died, a lot of people thought that like the, like the mafia, I guess like the Chinese mafia, correct me if I'm wrong, jump in, like had something to yeah. do with this murder. So I don't yeah. know. I think it was Enter the Dragon that Bruce Lee died on, uh, if I'm not mistaken. After. I don't think he died on set, right? He died yeah, after. I didn't yeah. Yeah, he died after. Um, he but, got but hurt on set. It, was it a, it was a, it wasn't a gun. He didn't get shot. Bruce Lee didn't get shot. No, he got, I believe, punched it was like or something. A brain aneurysm or something. Right. Right. But the, uh, in the film, they're mocking a film getting shot and killed on a film set. Gotcha. Mm. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I, watching well, this, watching Brandon Lee in this was. A, I thought he he he's definitely was a, uh, I thought he was a very good actor. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I I did too. He had, yeah. he, had a Keanu, yeah. he had a Keanu vibe to him that I didn't probably realize till now watching it later. Um, definitely a Keanu feel to to him. I wonder if he would have had a similar career trajectory. 
he definitely uh, even at times looked you know like neo you know yeah. that that yeah. type of dark kind of uh world sure. um yeah the director on this was uh, alex proyas who went on to do tons of other films uh one of his b other bigger hits was uh um i robot with will smith and uh, others so uh when it was shown that you know the the guilty party of whoever mishandled the props and stuff was done uh you know he he kind of was able to go on with his career and stuff uh but it's a really sad real sad situation and uh a dark kind of another dark thing that was attached to this cult following of the crow yeah i mean all things considered i i know that the based on what i read they kind of had to you know change a couple things bring in some you know stunt doubles some cgi um in order to get the film out i'm um, like i guess it costs like an additional like eight million or something to finish it up but it's almost seamless uh, to me i mean again yeah, this I is my first tell. time viewing i can't tell where they did and i said it was I guess this was one of the, if not the first time they did the, the digital recreation of an actor. I think. Probably. Right. Movie, which I would have expected to look like shit, to be honest with you. Um, but it, but I, I really didn't know where they. Where well, they I mean, did. also the, the movie wasn't the, the highest of visual perfection either. So right. to and seamlessly digitally input something, I don't think wasn't that hard to do. Right. right. And it was actually, uh, originally they were going to have it done all black and white. Um, oh, that would yeah. have been really cool. Yeah. And just have the flashbacks in color. Um, but the studio wasn't really down for that. And it's really interesting because I got a lot of Sin City vibes. Right. Exactly. That yes. That's, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah. Yeah, especially when they like yeah. the miniature, like he's talking that raspy. I was like, "Yo, this is Sin City." <laughs> I also yeah, well, think, I think bef because of his death, they, I think they changed the flashbacks. I, I thought I read yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was, was originally going to be them showing him like a more linear story where he's killed. You see him with his girlfriend. He's killed. They're killed. Blah blah. blah and then the story. This way it was done because of his death. They had to do the flashbacks. Yeah, and, and I think, yeah. to be honest, I, I think it worked in, to their advantage in this respect because they were able to tell his backstory all in that flashback without having to add to the story as far as yeah. length time. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it, it did it a lot better in that sense of, of giving right. all of that. It got and, the story the moving quicker. It. You get into it faster. Yeah, it wasn't exactly. Like down with the... Yeah, I, I thought that worked for it too. Or yeah. say Brian, Brian was going to say something. No, I was just saying uh, they definitely um, took a horrible situation and were able to, I mean, credit to the editing and producing and the director to cobble together what they had to get covered in the last three days. I think it added to this kind of film noir look to it by making a lot more flashbacks where the villains told the reasoning behind what they did as opposed to whatever was scripted for it. And, um, you know, this was a, a dark character to bring from a comic strip to, uh, to put on to screen. I know um, when I heard amongst my friends who are comic readers, comic book readers and the Crow readers, they were like, oh, I don't know about this. You know, and then they were like, Brandon Lee's son, or, or rather uh, Bruce Lee's son, what? Yeah. And then yeah, it kind of kind of worked out. I mean, he wasn't super young. Like, I don't know when he broke into acting because that was what he was said weird he was about. Dolph Lundgren first. What was it like? Not Chinatown. Uh, what was the movie he did with Dolph Lundgren? Brian, you're the film expert. Help me. Um, <laughs> Dolph Lundgren. The one that Brand Brandon Lee did with Dolph Lundgren. I'm pretty sure Brandon. Lee. I didn't know what he did. I didn't know anything. He, he, he did, did like he did like a handful. He did a lot of stuff like uh like. Um, more like karate stuff, like oh, uh, yeah, showdown in Tokyo. Showdown in Tokyo. Okay. But he was you were like close. Big trouble in Little China. He definitely wasn't uh, a known. Like, no, he wasn't. He wasn't big, but he, and he was. And he wasn't super like, young color. to break in. Like I think he was almost thirty, wasn't he? That I don't Something know. Like that. Which I was know. interesting because he, again, he was. He, you know, he's he comes from yes. Hollywood royalty, essentially. He yeah. was a good actor. He had a good look about him. Like it was weird that this was really his breakout role. And then he dies on set. Hmm. 
Cameron and he, he had actually they actually signed him to three crow films. Oh, and the right. of this one had nothing like they changed the ending. I don't know if they changed it before his death or after his death, to be quite honest. It um but I know that they had him because he saved the little girl. Um he you know, he was supposed to be doomed to walk. Um he like in, in the comics they have this uh you know, this character called the Skull Cowboy and the Skull Cowboy kind of directs him to do certain things and basically tells him that, you know, you, if you come back for revenge for your girlfriend, you have, you can only kill the people associated and help, like, you can only communicate with the people for revenge. And um, in the movie, when he saves the little girl, it's kind of like, they had a whole scene, I think that they maybe cut or never filmed, um but basically saying like if you save her you won't spend eternity with your fiance you'll be doomed to walk the earth forever and that's where two and the the second film and third film come in um and but you know because of the death we only got the first one there were actually other crows and um did anyone has anyone seen there's actually heard, two, three. No, I heard they were really bad. And a TV show. Um, the Skull Cowboy was supposed to be played by Michael Berryman, I think. Yep. Who was who we had on the show? Look at us. When? Um, we had him on about a year ago. Okay. Not on not not on movies. I, like, I don't remember this at all. We, we had him on one of our live streams. Very nice, very nice man. Oh, he's cool. Um, he was supposed to play Skull Cowboy, and now they're doing a remake of the crowd. I with Jason Momoa, with, with uh, Sc- uh, Scarsgard, what's his name? Just Scarsgard. kidding. Jason Momoa yeah. was in talks for years. <laughs> I did see that. Yeah, too, well, Crystal. no, Momoa but I think they started pre-production on this one. I think they started. Momoa, Momoa, Momoa was uh, scheduled to be in Isn't the remake. Pictures of him, but just it, like the crow out there. Yeah, that's what I saw. I saw like straight up images of him. Are you sure it's not Jason Momoa? No, it's it's now Bill no, Scarsgard. It's not. He left, oh. and then Luke Evan was supposed to do it, and then he he decided not to do it um, because he wanted he didn't want to ruin Lee's iconic role. That's yeah, I think that'd be a really hard thing to do because oh yeah. No, oh, well, they're no. in okay, they're okay, in. All, right, all right, hang on, everybody. All right, okay, we had Christopher <laughs> we had Christopher Lee. I mean, uh, uh, Christopher Reeves as Superman. Plenty of people have stepped in and did fine. The whole like <laughs> this, I couldn't ruin the role of so and so. Come on, Your Honor, I, Your Honor, I give exhibits one to twelve thousand Spider Mans. <laughs> Come on. Also, also, it's like it's not an iconic role like The Godfather. <laughs> It's no, but it's, 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 it's because he died for, on set. If exactly. he had not died on set, this would not be yeah, I understand the movie that. it is today. Like right I don't, on. I don't even know if this movie would be a cult classic if he. Oh, it would have. It would have. I think. You think so? I, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't. Yeah. There's, there's enough. The soundtrack alone, I, I feel like you get that in the right circles. Everybody's just gonna be, you know. I loved the Cure. Like when Hell we, yeah. like we, I watched it this morning because I hadn't seen this movie since junior high. And I was like, oh, my God, this is the movie that made, like introduced me to The Cure. <laughs> Listen, I mean, you got The Cure, Stone Temple Pilots, Nine, Nine Inch Nails. Nails, Rage Against the Machine, you know, The Rollins Band, Violent Femmes, Pantera, Helmet, Thrill Kill Cult. You got Jesus and the Mary Chain, and the list goes on and on. This alone is the reason. It, it's almost as good as the Clerks soundtrack. Not really, <laughs> but almost. <laughs> And they both came out in 1994. So we knew yeah. what we were doing when it came to music in 94. And there was, okay, I don't remember which band. Brian, you probably do. So one of the bands, uh, I want to say it was Nine Inch Nails, um, originally had a different song. But the song talked about kind of uh, um, like, be, you know, being shot and killed. And they so they, they pulled it and did another song specifically for this movie i think they like made a song for this film perfect i, I don't know which band that was uh Maybe. but okay. whoever did it Noah? that was very yeah. very cool <laughs> no uh, uh, alexa <laughs> um, Man, not right the- uh, it's fine it's, so, fine it's fine let's talk a little bit about the overall I, I me and crystal talked a little or we talked a little earlier we touched on this we're like let's save it for the yeah we hung up on each show. other we're gonna talk because about this because I, I was thinking like even when I saw this as a as a essentially a uh, a kid, not a kid, but whatever, I was, I was not super old. 
But like, I remember thinking that this movie was uh, thin on plot. And I rewatching it like for the 20th time, it's still like the plot of this movie is very, very simple. Like, dude's yeah. killed. There's no real motivation behind the killing except it's like, yeah, let's hurt. get that board back out. It's like, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I love that it's like because it's like, it's was it Mischief Night? What is it called? Um, Devil's, Devil's Night. Night. Devil, Devil's Night. They're like, oh, let's just go kill people for fun. And then, um, and then the guy just comes back, and there's you know, and he, and he just goes. It's revenge porn, is what I was calling it. Yeah. Actually, there is a deeper think uh, point to this. Uh, Devil's Night allowed these mob guys to burn out apartment buildings, thus making the inventory of apartments less, so people had to pay higher rent. Right. It's weird. And it's kind of like, <laughs> yeah, and it's kind of a real thing, but right. taking it to the nth degree. Right. Okay. Um, so uh, that's what happened in the Bronx, actually, in the early, late 60s, early 70s, when buildings got burnt out. You know, people's rents went through the roof because there right. wasn't a lot of other places to live. Right. So with that very thin plot, the murders ensued. The murders ensued. And, in and then Detroit, the revenge. We actually call it Angels Night now. And because um, Detroit, and especially in 94, had one of the biggest fires, um, ironically, the year that this movie came out. So, well, yeah. the, the, I feel like the, the one thing I, I felt lacking in this, you know, not to jump around too much, was Please. the development of the, was that the police? No. Um, <laughs> the development of, the bad guys right like so like you don't really get to not like the bad guys that much yeah. because you're seeing you're seeing everything in like a flashback like segments and you're not really getting the full feel of like what these guys what they went through and and how these like bad guy so you weren't really invested as much in like oh i want that guy to die so bad I mean, like, you wanted the four that raped her to die, but like yeah. the good guy who sleeps with his sister, like right. you don't like him because he's <laughs> sleeping with his sister. But like other than that, I don't really know anything about him. I didn't, other than he he has to straight uh, straighten his hair and he has a samurai sword and he eats eyeballs <laughs> and he <laughs> runs a, and he runs a nightclub. Yeah, and he runs a nightclub. And yeah, I, I felt like that part of it lacked a lot of, like, a little bit of punch because of that. Um, and why did we have to see him sleep with his sister? Like, and his sister's role was so, like, not important that if they pulled her out of this movie, it would have been, like, the same movie, I feel. No, at the end, she, she the spoiler alert. Out. Yeah, she was the one that figured out that the crow, the she actual was, like, the bird, mysterious, the crow. Yeah, she was, like, right. mysterious. She, had, she was like, the witch. We had yeah. like four lines yeah. this entire time. <laughs> I don't know. And then she says something at, like in front of all the mobsters. I couldn't really hear it, but everyone just laughs at her. And I couldn't tell if they were like laughing at her or she said her. She, 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 she said she likes the lights. So I'm assuming oh, the fire. because the fire, yeah. the fire burn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I thought she said. I like the lights. And everyone was like, ha ha ha. ha. And I was like, why is that funny? Hmm? So I will it say, really yeah, in <laughs> okay. Hmm? I will say, I just the fact that like the characters, like all of their names for the villains, and this kind of goes back to like the Sin City vibes, but Skank. also just kind of like, yeah. So you got Skank, you got Fun Boy, you got Tin Tin, and then you got T Bird, and yeah. then you got Top Dollar as the the main baddie. Actually, they're all like Dick Tracy names. So you got like Flat Top and Hammerhead. <laughs> and yeah. You just, they're very much like a the uh, fighter scroll or scroll games, you know, where you keep going through the neighborhood and you're two yeah. and your buddy beat up some baddies and move to the next board and oh no, we got to get into the thing and beat up and then we get to the boss. It it kind of has that vibe to it, uh, <laughs> definitely. I do know you're absolutely right. That's a great uh, analogy because I can totally see Tintin just showing up as a boss and his name flash across the screen, right? And then he gives a little catchphrase. And at like, the end, uh, you got to fight top dollar. Halloween ain't till tomorrow, sweetheart. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to see, like, the bad guys kind of be more connected. Like, it kind of just felt like a group of people who all just had this idea of, of murdering everyone. I don't know. Like, I felt like... I. 
I guess I just wanted a little bit more structure out of the the gang, if that makes any sense. Well, you only saw them do one kind of gang related thing yeah. a year ago, and they were just hanging out ever since. Right. That was the good thing. Like another Detroit film, uh, RoboCop, for instance, they had a ton of different a ton of different crimes that they were had their fingers in, so to speak. And they were a crime syndicate. These guys were like crime hobbyists. Hmm? Right. Right. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Dr. Detroit, Brian. Which is a different All right. Role. So I'm dying to know, son, with your like beautiful, like gothic aesthetic, were you like a <laughs> girl yeah, fan was as a baby son? <laughs> the son in the middle. <laughs> yeah, I think that Brandon Lee pretty much like created some unrealistic expectations for every goth girl. <laughs> did you say baby son? I did. I said baby son. The baby son. Yeah. Baby son. <laughs> I like that. Too. <laughs> so, yeah, and I was definitely one of them. So, so how old were you when you big first saw crush, the Big crush. Um, I was actually probably like my late teens anyway. So, um, yeah. No, I'm not, I was going to say it's recent. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> not at all recent um, but it feels like because it is such an old movie that I feel like I should have seen it sooner and I've actually only seen it like a couple times because um, it's well because of the obvious what we were talking about earlier the tragedy like the tragedy behind it and everything I feel like you have to kind of be in the right mind state to watch this movie so it doesn't mm -hmm. kind of affect you for like the next two or three days um but yeah, well, it's it's no, it's, it's kind of like watching someone do their performance of the Joker, you know, in that sense. Like you see, like where what is this? What's his thinking? What's the next thing going to happen? Kind of thing. Um, and when I saw it the first, I hadn't seen it in years. So when I watched it again today, um, I was like, oh right. I was like, this is this is very much kind of almost like a weird Heath Ledger version of of what the crow could be. It'd be interesting what Heath Ledger, like if someone was to do it, speaking about people who had an untimely death, um, what Heath Ledger would have done, what what, what he would have done with it. I'm sorry, I thought that's what you meant by like watching someone play the Joker because Heath Ledger's death. Well, right. actually, I think so Heath Ledger's makeup actually came a little bit from the crow and the crow's right. makeup when we yeah. first did it, it was too clean uh, and the makeup, uh, the makeup artist actually said, you know what, when we film, we're going to have you put it on sloppily. And then they made him sleep in it. So it was like worn. So he came to the studio. With I, it, like, I think, I think that was Brandon's idea. I, I think Brandon oh, was the one that he wasn't happy that it was too clean. And so oh. he actually would put it on and then would sleep in it. Oh, that, that's okay. how I read it anyway. I do think it's funny how it inspired like uh, every, every dude in their, his twenties, Halloween costume for the next like ten years. Very uh, easy. <laughs> you really saw well, you could, that in the be at least four different crows at every Halloween party. I think but you could. Park, I mean, with the right hairdo and a handful of knives, you can be scissor hands in that you same outfit. But like, <laughs> yeah. you remember South Park? I think is like Satan dresses as the crow. Yes. And then he, get, he gets mad because there's like other crows. That's, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's exactly what it used to be like in the nineties. Like you go to a Halloween party, like, all right, there's gonna be four guys as the pro, and then <laughs> and then it happened again with Heath, Heath Ledger's Joker. Like it was right. like you saw every guy who's like, I'm gonna be the Joker, I'm the edgy Joker. Uh, and then really it movie. came back, yeah, for the 2019 Joker too. Like there was so many. Oh right, 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 right. Yeah, I used to uh, I used to stand at my booth at Comic Cons and play. Guess which movie this Joker is. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd say, oh, there's the Heath Ledger Joker. Oh, there's the so-and-so Joker. That was also and in The Office, actually. I think um, Dwight and Creed both dressed as the Joker one year. Yeah. <laughs> and and <laughs> speaking of Dwight, uh, in the, one of the episodes when they're all outside sharing their favorite movies, I think Dwight's favorite movie is The Crow. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> there you go. There the you Crow, go. yeah. Oh, my um, God, you're right. I don't, you know, it's interesting because this movie's so... Um, a basic, <laughs> like like as far as plot goes, it's a basic, very straightforward, basic plot. There's no real big twist or turn. Like he can't, and it's also like um the whole movie 
there's really no weakness to him until you at the end when the the chick figures out what's her name. He's like, fuck. She's like, you hurt I the crow like and you can hurt him. But like <clears throat> the whole movie, there's no weak. You're just like, okay, I'm gonna watch him kill somebody else, and it's just gonna be cool. So at first, I was kind of like thrown off by that because I was I kind of approaching it as like you know like with superhero you know knowledge, kind of like oh this guy's way too overpowered you know. But then if you I, I had to approach it more with like a horror movie like logic, like okay this is like you know Jason or you know this is you know the unstoppable monster coming up you know from the grave. So rather than seeing it as kind of like the superhero that's just you know invincible. It was kind of like, no, this is like the bad monster coming back. Obviously not bad, but coming back and exacting revenge on all the, you know, the kids. Which normally would happen in the movie. And like that would like go on in like the third act, right? Like you'd you'd spend the first two acts setting up the revenge plot in the third act. Whereas this movie just like, we're just going to get into the revenge. We're just going to do the third act stretch out. That's how it felt to me. But going yeah. back to Crystal, I did really like when he gets shot and he just goes, ah, damn. <laughs> like, it was, it, it was just, yeah. The interaction between him and Top Dollar was just so, like, I don't know, natural. As in, like, ah, Very shit. natural. Almost, like, too natural. Yeah. Because it, it's so, like, like offhanded. Just like, ah, shit. Um, I... Uh, also, David Patrick Kelly is maybe my favorite actor. I forget where did he like. Where did he go? I don't yeah. know. Is that the guy like, with the, like the raspy kinda, voice? Huh? Is that the raspy voice? Sleep with the. He's sister? the. I'll, I'll show you a pic. Hold on, I'll grab one. He, but he's not, the. I've um, seen Val Kilmore in that. Dude. He's the one he straps into the into the car, and he's like, "Hey, man!" Like he was in Commando. Oh. If you remember, yeah, he was. Uh, he was T Bird. T-Bird. T Bird, yeah. So the guy who was the warrior in the Warriors come out and play, yay. Yeah, that's him, right? Okay. Yeah, that's him. Okay. I'm I'm pretty sure he's in the Warriors. Yeah, he's definitely in the Warriors. Somebody was in the Warriors, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was his first movie, The Warriors. But he was also in another movie we saw in on the uh, the club was Dreamscape. He was in there as well. Dreamscape, and I tried to get him on the I tried to get him on the live streams, but. I don't think yeah, he uh, also uh, famously in f- the movie 48 Hours with Eddie yeah. Murphy and then Commando, of course. He was genius. What happened to Sully? I had to let him go. Sully. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You said you, you promised to let me go. I lied. I lied. Hey, Sully, <laughs> remember when I told you I was going to kill you last? Yeah, man, you said you were going to kill me last. I lied. And then, and then he lets him go and then you hear him scream, <laughs> you lied. <laughs> you lied. <laughs> different movie but great uh, but he always <laughs> is really good at portraying these kind of like scumbag. douchey scumbags that you just oh you want to punch them in the face <laughs> jason you, <laughs> we, jason well, jason who works for us would will uh quote um commando lines all day oh come mm-hmm. on he does a good um he does a good bennett yes yeah i don't need to shoot you i'm gonna <laughs> kill you myself <laughs> I love that Bennett in that movie is like super out of shape compared to uh, Arnold, and he wears like chainmail. What a weird character Bennett was. Sorry, especially movie. you know since in the Road Warrior, that guy was shirtless all the time. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. I forgot about that. No. Um, <laughs> um, okay, sorry. What Continue. More? Continue. <laughs> no. Any anyway, other questions? So, so Commando. Commando. Uh, okay. Other people like um, Rochelle Davis, the little girl who plays Sarah in this. Uh, she was great. Yeah. Uh, I think that was her. In? I think that was her first role. I can't remember. I think oh my it God, was too, shape. but she hasn't, she hasn't done anything in a while. That did shave haircut yeah, was she... so popular in the nineties. Like, mm-hmm. actually, for me, it got really popular like in the two thousands. Like, I had so many girlfriends who had the shaved. Son, did you have the shaved head in the back? No, 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 I I, but I know what you mean. Yeah, I had a lot of girlfriends who are like a little older than me, so they probably would have like you know, this movie might have been a bigger impact on them. Um, but yeah, the shaved head is like no. So is that um (laughs) is that the reverse mullet for girls? Like you know, serious in the back, party in the front. 
I guess. I guess. I know a lot of girls in the South do it just if you have like really thick hair. It's a way to like literally just yeah. keep cool. I'm just sick of my boyfriend grabbing the back of my head all the time. So I just shaved that shit off. <laughs> I love that it automatically comes with attitude. <laughs> Gotta throw in some sort of, you know, es essence to it. Yeah. I love it. it was good. Um, good essence. So the actor who was in The Crow 1, 2, and 3, does anyone know who, what actor was in all three crows? Uh, was I didn't Ernie? know there were other two. <laughs> yeah, there are two other Crow movies, and one has uh, Kirsten Dunst in it when she was a little younger. I, I, I never watched him. Uh, okay, it was the actual Crow, which is actually technically a raven, <laughs> and his name was Magic, and he lived long enough to do all three of them because he was a good stunt crow. Nice. Oh, I know. <laughs> good stunt crow. Oh, that's cute. I, I, think, I think they do have a long lifespan. Do they? Yeah, because um, I was wondering if they're going to remake it. Like, is is Magic still alive? <laughs> that is, that be, they got to have a shot in there just for the hardcore fans where, like, they have, like, a, a shot of a him, like, blinking old, or something. An old crow. Right? Yeah, and then everyone gets up in the audience. Like, oh, my God. Magic! <laughs> so I, I thought this was a really good um, uh, role for Ernie Hudson. I totally yeah. forgot he was in here. We it started and I was like, Ghostbusters? What? <laughs> so I, I didn't Wink. recognize him right away. So Michael Wink. Yeah, Ernie Hudson, I like being but he was good in this. I, I just like it had been so long, I just forgot. Michael Wincott, who played the main big bad. Another uh, one who's always a a a, a boss or a crime syndicate person, the evil murderer, or something like that. He's very his, good, and he's he is and so for good. Years, I confuse. Honestly, I think I just realized. So I confused him. So that's that's Michael Wincott, and mm -hmm. I used to think it was the same actor who played. Who played yeah, yeah, they do look alike. <laughs> I thought it was Terry Silver from Karate Kid Three, who's also in Cobra Kai. I thought that was the same freaking guy. Different I jaw. I love different. Cobra Kai so much. Holy shit! Two different different jawline. Two different, different guys. guys. Look at look at that jaw and look at that jaw. I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't realize it. I think it was just He's like prettier. Mm. Just see, to be honest with you, Cobra Kai is prettier. I I could see Michael Wincott if you put that picture back, and oh. someone did over that picture, the Joker makeup. He'd Ooh. be a Joker. Mm. I kept seeing like Val Kilmer. Very silver. Go awesome. Like Iceman. <laughs> All right, one more question for Sun. Sun, how did this movie impact you as like a girl? Like, did this movie like create an inspiration for you? <laughs> no, not really. I mean, I think it was just, I mean, it's part of my goth girl pack DVD set, you know, that I have on the side <laughs> for sure. But, you know, I, it just, it, it kind of just makes me a little bit too sad and just being a natural <laughs> kind of, melancholic person i think um i avoid it <laughs> for, the, for the for those at home what what are the other uh dvds in the the goth girl bundle pack oh the cure no yeah oh. they, they, like a, no a dvd <laughs> the cure? unless there is a cure dvd um, that i'm not aware of the, the, the cure documentary the cure oh, documentary Burton movie is in there the craft can we please do with the craft oh sorry movie? i'm gonna say the movie craft the craft. Say the craft. The craft. Okay. craft. Next year, let's do a craft the next year. The craft. Yes. Yeah. The craft. The craft is like and we need to do a clerk. We need to do a clerks, even though it falls outside of the of the genre. The the goth girls uh, mm -hmm. like, <laughs> DVD pack. We just yeah. need to do a clerks homage cover. Is what we need. Yeah, so fun fact, I lived like in this upstairs area when I was a kid, and I was surprisingly very like emo as a kid. I guess it's also like the time I grew up in, it was like very in to be emo. And I had this like giant, like one of those like ridiculously large posters of the crow. And um, I used to really think that his death was one of the times he gets shot in the film. For whatever reason, I thought they had filmed it and kept it in there because, like, I was not, like, I don't know, I was stupid. Um, and so I used to watch the movie a lot to see if I could 
see where he dies, mm. which is really morbid. I don't know why I did that, but they actually obviously don't have the real death no. in the film. Um, in they, fact, no. they, said that they, they said that they destroyed the footage well, they, after the um, they showed it in court to make sure it wasn't a murder, which destroying it doesn't make any sense. They uh, he, It was supposed to be the scene where he gets killed in the beginning. Yeah, when he's holding the groceries. Yeah. So. Um, what other thoughts do we have? Any any favorite characters, least favorite characters, any least favorite characters? We know somebody said the sister. I think Noah. Was it Noah who said he didn't like the sister? Who didn't like the I, sister? I liked everybody. I thought they all did a great job. <laughs> any characters you didn't care for? Any characters? Uh, you know who else was uh, the the what the mom? What was her name? She's been Darla. in a lot of stuff. I can't Darla. think of what else Darla. What else was Darla in? I feel like I've seen her a million times and stuff, but I can't well, I think, place her. I don't. No, more like who was in Darla? Darla was the mom, right? Yeah. Are you looking that up, uh, Brian? <laughs> yeah, she was in a bunch of things. She was in True Romance, Unforgiven, oh, Desperately Seeking Susan. Uh, she was also in Unforgiven. That's what I'm thinking. She's one Unforgiven. of the one of the prostitutes that gets cut. She's correct. Cut. And then correct. They, they hire Clint Eastwood to get revenge. Uh, great freaking movie. Real great movie. Um, I'm maybe seeing Henry Rollins maybe in the cast. Movie of all time. What's that? I just saw Henry Rollins in the cast. Where? What role did he play? Of the crowd. Well, he and, he, he contributed. Black. He contributed a song. Yeah, he was music. I think. Oh, oh, the song. Okay, okay. He's under like okay. cast. That's why I was like, <gasps> yeah. what? Darla um, was from Unforgiven. Now it's all coming because I've seen Unforgiven about four hundred times. As far as like disliking of a character, I didn't dislike a character. I just couldn't stand there. Like, fire it up! Fire it up! Fire, fire it like, up! Fire like, it up! I was like, is this fucking? intermural football like what the hell dude like that is the weakest gang kind of a bonding thing <laughs> they were eating bullets dude yeah very weak to me, gang. The, 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 sorry go ahead, Mara. to me the gang seemed i mean obviously okay they were immature but they just seemed beyond immature like for <laughs> the age group and for thugs that they were i mean i just yeah, i just felt like they were <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're way too old know, to be doing. Just... Like you should be 15, 16, and doing that crap. Maybe twenty. These guys all look like they're about forty. Yeah, Maybe. we should yeah. do an episode. <laughs> we should do a clip show episode where it's not necessarily one movie, but it's a theme like best gangs out of these five or six movies or something like that you know like the gang the gang from robocop the gang from this movie the gang from whatever and put them all together I'm like which gang do you think would win like in a bracket formation that, you get, you get I a, love that idea. a couple steven seagal movies in there too right exactly like the gangs against steven seagal the gangs yeah. you know um, anybody that you know arnold had to face things like that Big trouble, little child. <laughs> right. Yeah, I exactly. Always love, I always love like a non thought out gang. Like, where do these guys? What bonded these guys? Usually, like, because usually a gang is is like usually it's like it's like Italian, black, Latino. Like you have like they stay. Yeah, these with guys people. are all over the place. Yeah. No, these guys yeah. just they all gangs, live in. They all like just come together. It was just very inclusive. I love that they're an inclusive gang. It just seems odd that they're so inclusive. And they all got cute nicknames. Like, we're a gang, but we're gonna accept everybody. All right, we're gonna kill people, but we I want everybody to feel accepted. We all <laughs> live in shitty Detroit. That's our bond. We all live in shitty Detroit. It's so funny because it doesn't it just doesn't work like that, but it's always every movie. It's like we gotta have it a totally inclusive gang. It's like okay, <laughs> makes sense. I've never seen this, but sure. Hey, how come we don't have an Asian guy in our in our gang? Yeah, we we, we'll, we'll, make, we'll make the sister. We'll make the sister Asian. Yeah, it's just yeah, always, I always... love the Warriors. Will win. They've got the most gangs. That's yes. Yeah, so there that, you go. See six twenty nine. I see you. Mm -hmm. I see your comment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> love, love it. Love um. It. Yeah. Nineties gangs were the best. Nineties gangs are always make so much sense. 
Nowadays, it's always a sort of a Russian or or some sort of that's the that's the go to. You watch Stranger Things every every, <laughs> every well, eight not years. Yet. Listen, yeah. every eight years, there's a new boogeyman a villain. New, right. It's the Middle Eastern terrorist. Oh, it's the Italian mafia. Oh, it's the yeah, Asian yeah, triad. That got played out for a while. Right. Which, then I'm it's the Russian out. mob. And then it's the, the Mexican the cartel. It's the easy go-to right now. Yeah, the, the Russians were out. Now they're back in. They're back in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I will break you. I think we should it's bring an the for that one. We got to bring the interracial gang back. I want to bring it back. I want to. I I like <laughs> games <laughs> with. <laughs> what? Oh, Brian's face when you said oh. that was great. That was great. Um, <laughs> what were you no, what were you saying? Oh, I I just I just like fun fun gangs that like how you can have action figures like T Bird and Tintin would be in a like a multi pack if I you bought their to action to figures together. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Sure. Can I have Tintin with the explosion <laughs> car off the dock? <laughs> <laughs> With uh, you got you got Fun Boy and removable syringes. Oh my God, I, Brian! I actually have you as an action figure somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool that we can say that. That is awesome. <laughs> someone, someone custom made a pop. Nice. nice. Was it Jenny nice. Bear? Oh, it's a nice game. Yeah, I don't know. I like those eyes. Noise. I have mine's not within reach. We didn't show many. There and to my eyes. We didn't show many still. Wow, they got the perfect shade of blue there. Yes. Oh, and I even have a zit, too. Oh, no. What the? Very sexy. a very sexy pop. And also, me as a saint. Look at that. Is that a one-on-one pop? Yeah, it's a custom. Custom pop. I want a pop. Yeah, I. Um, the same person made a custom pop for me, but it's just not within reach for me to get it. So. <laughs> Brian, Brian says, "I'm just glad Brian can play with himself." There yep. You Thank you, Brian. Brian. <laughs> He's happy for you. He's happy for you. Um, anything else we should talk about before we? Because we have more to cover. We have a Ebiscope oh. uh, chart. We have. To show the cover. I think the only other really cool thing that I noticed in the movie um, that you can see, he he actually cuts himself on the scene where he like takes the heroin and like squeezes it back out of her vein. So there's a blade and he actually cuts himself on it while catching it. And so for the rest of the movie, he's wearing tape on his hands. Um, Really small to see, but I thought that was kind of interesting because, you know, just a fun, fun film fact I found today. Who knew that that wasn't going to be the only wound he got on that movie? Mm. What? What? Too too soon? Wait, what what were some of the other curses? Um, Because it like, so a guy got electrocuted on the set. Um, Obviously the tragic. Oh Oh my God, stop it, Ralph. So cute. I I don't think I wrote it down. (laughs) We had, there were like, there were like a couple of things that were just kind of crazy on the set. Hello. Oh my god, he's so Hello. cute. Go ahead. <laughs> Goodbye. Go ahead, Buffy. Go. <laughs> just taking dogs from off screen. Just found her. Is that new dog? Hey, hey, check this one. Check this one out. As, I, there might be a new dog in the house. That's all I'm saying. Congratulations. <laughs> Name's Buffy. Buffy. Buffy, like the vampire. Vampire. Join us once a month as we reveal a new dog each episode. Every episode, you get a new French bulldog to look at. Um, well, how Ralph refused. There's one right there. There's Raven. What other the things? Smartest, the smartest thing Raven ever said right there. Yo, what up, Raven? Oh, my God. Click on um, him again. I want to see his picture. Is it, can you make his like make his uh, comment big again real quick? Whose picture? Raven? Raven. Yeah, yeah. Show Raven's yeah. comment. Comment again. Okay. Will write for food. Okay. Just seeing. I, I want to see. He's naked. Okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. That was. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> Are you guys. I'm getting off track. Are you guys ready for the Zebascope chart? Zebascope. 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 Fire it up. Chris Fire Samson it up. Down the Zebascope chart. Is Chris Rich. Samson watching? We don't know. We don't know. Ta-da. Um, I can't wow. Read 
Total Recall was like it was fucking fun. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, we have a we have a strong lineup to finish the the whole year out. So this That's is going to be yeah. Pirates of the Caribbean. What? Uh, all great. What? I don't know how Pirates of the Caribbean got in there. It's not, what? It's, <laughs> it's Joe because Joe was supposed to be on. He freaking picked half these movies, and then he's not even on this show. Somebody's okay. been influenced by some sort of trial. All right. Yeah. Can I start the Caribbean off? That doesn't fit in here whatsoever. Topical. Topical. But, oh but I love God. that. I love it. I love it. Well, it's fun to do a pirate cover is what it comes down to. Okay. Oh, okay. what do we? Fair enough. Fair enough. What else do... <laughs> it's better than that one movie that bombed with Matthew Modine and Gina Davis. Cutthroat Island. Mm. Um, you never heard of that one, did you? Barbarella, <laughs> best movie of all time. Oh my god, that, Crystal, that's a that's a no. Barbarella. No. that's a permanent <laughs> Barbarella. No. I don't know. I don't know about all of y'all. All I do is every time I see that. Every time I see that number five, all I see is the chart as one big middle finger to the rest of us. She's like, I don't care. Mine's a five. F you to the rest yeah. of you. Unreal. That's an unreal. Look at Marilyn's score. <laughs> Son, Marilyn, Ralph. Uh, did I give Barbarella a 2.25? Was I drunk? Yeah, no, you did. I think I, oh, I did it because of the It was solely because of Gene Fonda. Obviously. Okay. And you, see, you, you, have to, you have to give it the honesty that I give it. I did a five, a solid five. It's a perfect film in Crystal's eyes. It's a perfect film. Okay. You do no wrong. <laughs> um, let us let us give this. Let us rank rate this movie. Let us rate this movie. <laughs> that was the inspiration. Was that the inspiration for your cover? Uh, yeah. Huh? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Oh, um, there's Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to begin the rating? Uh, does anybody want to jump in and give the crow a rating? It ain't, it ain't a sure, fire. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start the fucking fire uh, on of, this one. Uh, how many squawks do you give? This? I, I'm gonna give this uh, two crows. <laughs> Two, 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 two crows. Wow, Brian. They're not quite a murder. Wow. No, I didn't I'm, that. I'm just sorry. The thin plot, the very, uh, all the, look, if I'm giving Brandon stars, five stars. Man, so literally took a bullet for the performance. Two uh, as bullets. far as the, the, the writing, the writing is not even a crow poop. Uh, <laughs> and the, uh, the performances are about a three or three-ish. Uh, a lot of big names or people who became names. Uh, after this movie, but overall, I remember this time watching it. When I saw it in the theater, I was like, "Oh wow, it's pretty cool." But this is before, like you know, Marvel movies and all this other stuff. And it's hard to, with today's eyes, see this movie and be like, "Yo, this shit's dope," and I can watch it again and again I, and again. I feel like you are solely rating that because I feel like twenty-year-old Brian gives this a four. I give it. I'd probably give this a three and a half to yeah. four, maybe 20, uh, 23 year old when this came out, 24 year old uh, Brian. Um, but I think today's Brian is like, eh, this could have been betterly written. This thing should be a bit of a schlock. Uh, Casey's dad gives it a 1.5. He did not like it. No. Okay. Sorry, we watched Michael. it together. Um, Casey, why don't you go next since your dad is rating the movies with us? Oh, I kind of wanted to pull a crystal and wait till everybody else answered. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, hmm. guess... Well, think of it this way: there's nowhere but up. So, come on. That's true. That's true. Unless I hated it. Um, no, I, I didn't talk a lot this episode because I don't know why I like this movie. I just kind of do. It's one of those movies. I'm like, that was a good experience. Um, I think a lot of it is I just really enjoy the aesthetics of this movie. It's so aggressively 90s to me that it, it just makes me happy. Um, Brandon Lee is, is he's a cutie. Um, yeah. so that gives it, like, honestly, a plus two right there. Um, wow. You're starting at a two base. Yes. Okay. Um, it's the crystal scale. 
I guess I'll I'll give it a three point five. Because Whoa! It wasn't. It was first time viewing too. First time viewing. I don't know. It just made. I mean, it was so sad, but like it made me happy. So. Wow. Okay. Three point five. Made you happy. That's all you can do. Um. Son, you didn't say much either. What, what were you? What are your thoughts here? Well, my my only thought is on uh, Ernie Hudson's character wearing his underwear and his Hi. top hat at the same time. That's, That's my right. only thought. I had to no, I'm it. kidding. So <laughs> <laughs> I love that that also never gets explained. I think it's just like the crow being like, you still have your hat on, and he goes, oh yeah. Oh, he takes it off. Anyway. <laughs> right. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Why is he dancing around his apartment half naked with his hat on? Yeah. Because uh, he can. It's, it's for, for, <laughs> for me. Definitely. It's, it rates high, I think. Um, I love a good revenge movie. And, you know, the, the whole gothic kind of 90s vibe. I love it for that. So, yeah. Same like Casey. I don't know why I love it. I just do. And it kind of fits with, like, the aesthetics that I love, like already, just naturally. So, yeah, it's a four. Four, okay, mm -hmm. four. That's a big score. Um, who wants to go next? Who's I'll ready? Go. Marilyn. I'll go. I I, I have um, a feeling I know what you, Marilyn's giving us. Go ahead. You probably don't. I, and can you hear me all right? Because yeah, you're a little low, but we can hear oh. you. Okay, all right. Um, so. There were some things like in the editing that felt a little bit choppy to me. I loved the beginning. I loved the, I, yes, it wasn't a huge, uh, it was a ba very basic story and all that, but um, I felt it didn't have to be anything other than it was because it was pretty simple in that respect. Um, I enjoyed quite a few of the characters It maybe it had been a little bit too long, um, which is a good thing that uh, Brandon's character, uh, you know, the Crow's character, Eric, that the beginning was all put into that one scene, the flashbacks, because otherwise, how, you know, that, the movie would have been way too long. Um, yeah. But I'm going to, you know, and, and I kind of wavered back and forth with what I was going to give it, but with some of the pluses and pros and cons that I have with it, I enjoyed it. So I, I'm, I'm tossed with like three and a half or four. Wow. Three point yeah, seven. Like not, not what you expected. Yeah, right? I was, I was waiting for, yeah, I was waiting for a patented Marilyn like two. Yes, <laughs> nice, right. Brian. Yes. I was not expecting. <laughs> um, wow. So you are you going to go 3.75? Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. But the difference, but yeah, for that, let's let's do let's do like three point seven five, yeah. Wow. wow, lots of good ratings coming in. Uh, yeah, fourteen year old me would have given this a solid five for sure. Fourteen year old me like really loved this film. Um, now that was such an eternity ago. Um, so when I watched it today, I was really shocked at how much I did not like it. Um, wow. I really remember it being like a lot better. Um, yeah. So I'm going to probably go with the only because of how hot he was in this film and how <laughs> much of a crush I had on this. <laughs> like I, I'm going to, I'll, I'll give it, I'll give it, I'll give it a three. I'll give it a three because it's, you know, I think that it, it deserves its place in cinema history for so many reasons. Um, and I, you know, what's crazy is I always thought this was an 80s film growing up. Um, I didn't really realize it was a 90s film. Um, but it to me, it had like a really big 80s feel to it. Um, so I just, I love, I love the aesthetic of it. But yeah, I think I'm going to go with a three. Um, I don't think it held up as well. So, okay. yeah. That's fair. The story was Noah? just, I understand the editing reasons behind it, but still. 
Mm -hmm. uh, re request to see my prior grades again, please. Let's show Zebiscope. Let's show the Zebiscope. I know they were up for a while, but I forgot that I was supposed to be looking at them. Oh, and this I... is cheating. <laughs> yeah, no, just you I don't, don't, think, I don't think that's cheating. I could, it, it's more like I'm trying to keep everything relative. All right. So what was that? Barbarella was a tree. Oh, okay. That's gonna change some stuff though. All right, all right. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Barbarella is a three. That's right. Okay. Five. But I dig I dig it. Okay, so I, I will say I have been actively avoiding this movie for the last like decade or so. Uh, I've, I've, known about, I've known about the Crow comic and I've known about the Crow movie for the longest time, but it was just something like, I don't know. And, and this isn't to piss anybody off, but like I saw it and I was just like, oh, what is this Marilyn Manson crap? Like, <laughs> like and I was totally into like- uh, Gun just killed you with her face there, just saying. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, and here's the thing, like I, I was all about like, you know, I, I love like my chemical romance uh, and, and all, you know, like emo stuff like that. Uh, I was big into it, but I just, growing up, I was kind of like, ah, this isn't for me, this isn't my bag. But I, I watched it and I was pleasantly surprised. Um, it was better than I thought it was going to be. Um, I enjoyed its simplicity. Uh, for the sake of the movie, I thought that it worked and it served its function. Um, but I think it kind of, it works as a cult classic and it works as it's kind of like standalone thing. Um, I would probably give it a three. Um, I think I like Barbarella for its own stuff. And I, I like The Crow for its own stuff, but I would watch Barbarella over The Crow if I had the choice between the two. Wow. Interesting. I, I guess I just um, like wacky, campy sci-fi. But again, like I said, I like the, <laughs> I love The Cure. I, I, I love Rollins. I, I love all that, you know, but it's just putting it all together when he's standing on top of the, the, the roof and I just hear Robert Smith singing. It was just like, oh man, this is pretty on the nose huh was there a number somewhere in that whole thing <laughs> yes three. Oh, okay okay thank you noah okay <laughs> which is the same score Noah's as long it, noah likes to clarify why he's great i like to clarify no i get it no i get it i just i missed i missed the <laughs> actual number so that's fine wow. i did kind of slip it in there um this is interesting i find it's interesting that the two newbies both gave it really pretty good grades um yeah, because they've hated some other cult This classes. is tough for me because, like, I did – I probably would have thought this was a four for a long time. Because I – and I saw it many times, like, in my 20s, I think. I feel like in my 20s I watched it a lot. And then, like, I hadn't seen it in a long time, so. Uh, you're not going to give it – you're not going to give it a five? A five. <laughs> Love. 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 Um, he's saying it. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is a solid. I, I'm gonna say this. After all said and done, it, it inspired a lot of like. I feel like it's it's a big part of our pop culture in general, which is something to be said for that. Um, when a movie can can do that for as long as it has, and now it's gonna be remade. And hopefully, maybe because I do. I kind of want to see the remake. I want to see the updated version because I think I do. Good. Yeah. So like, I, I just hope they have different writers. That's all. They have different mm -hmm. writers. But like twenty year old me gives this a four, but you know, twenty five year old me <laughs> gives this, will give this a uh I'm gonna say a solid two point five. Oh 2. I see I would not have expected that from you. It dropped it, it just dropped after this viewing. I was like, oh, like this the story the story is so like meh. He's it's, not I happy. Mean, like I like many things about it, and I like the idea of it more than I like the movie itself. Um, that's probably the best way to put it. So two point five. Nice. Chalk it up. Um, it's tough to rewatch these movies. I use <laughs> I like so much. <laughs> Same thing happened with Total Recall. Um, okay. I love Total. Yeah. Do you want to see a, a, a cover? We yeah. want to see a cover. Yes. Please. Which uh, hopefully Mark is watching. I hope Mark's watching. Mark, are you watching? Uh, if Mark's Mark. watching, 
Uh, he'll be put. He'll be dropping the cover live now. Uh, and ready, Casey. We're ready. Okay. Dun, da, da, da. Woo! Oh, I love oh, it. Yes, See, you've got the tape on your fingers. Mark is watching, and Mark and he, is he watching. He only that because he cut himself. That's awesome. Son, awesome. all of all of your covers have been fantastic so far this year, but by far this one is my favorite. This I is agree. a knockout. This is definitely a knockout. My favorite. I love that cover. I give the yeah. cover a five. Five. Pro. Yeah, the, the the cover goes beyond numbers. The, co the cover think, past five. I think the goth girl <laughs> in her came through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we, we she loves this movie. We, we know we oh, she loves this. I know. Well, whenever I so be whenever honest, it's like be a honest, you game. just stood in front of a mirror and just sketched yourself on this one. Yes! Right? <laughs> I wish. Uh, did, you, did you sketch yourself? I wish. Be honest. Sorry? Did, did you sketch yourself? Is Brian right? Is Brian No, correct? I did not. I don't look like that. I wish you I did. did. <laughs> You're this beautiful guy. I wish I had that crow, though. <laughs> I was going to say, how do you make the crow stay still? Like ravens. Nice. So uh, guys, this is your spoiler, Halloween costume. Spoiler, that is actually me in the, on the cover. Yeah, that is you. <laughs> as the yeah, girl. I didn't, Thank as you the for girl. modeling, by the way. You're Look welcome. Great. You're thank you. <laughs> um, it, the, the book is now up. I don't have a link yet unless Mark dropped. Mark, can you drop me the link by chance? Um, I will <laughs> post it, or post it in our comments for the, the crew. The, the crew. Movie. Um, beautiful cover. One of my favorites now. It's, it's up there. I, this yeah. is tough because yeah, definitely. I, think, I yeah. think I'm trying to think of my favorites before. There's Good thing a, we don't have a Zebascope chart of her what? covers. Because you need a Zebascope cover chart. Um, no, I don't need to see it. Yeah. You guys can do it. Yeah, I think I think for. that's called. <laughs> I think the Zebascope cover uh, chart is the sales chart. Right. <laughs> Yes. Sales chart, yes, and they. I think most of these are sellouts. And if you guys aren't buying these covers, you should be because they're, they're freaking sold. awesome. Uh, and oh, I Mark remember one of your favorites. Graciously gave us a link. Um, and also, Mark hosts our podcast every month. Um, and he's great at it, by the way. If you guys aren't listening to our podcast, you should be. Um, and I think we're going to ask Marilyn and Brian to be on it at some point if they will. oh for fuck's sake yeah. <laughs> surprise yes. you're you're made to do it making you do it sorry Brian it's a, it's in the movie club contracts y'all sign the movie club contracts, contracts. what oh whoa, whoa you guys didn't have to sign a contract Brian didn't realize we made him sign his life away. Why the hell did I have to sign a contract? Don't worry about Listen, it. Listen, I fucking called in from an airport, for God's sakes. He did. He did. That was part of his contract. If you're in an airport, you still have to. Um, do you guys want to see Noah, layout? Noah? Wait, what's next month's movie? You guys, you guys are getting paid? Aliens. Uh, yeah, Aliens? <laughs> Is it Aliens? Did, Is it Aliens, right? Do aliens? Did we already do Aliens? No. No. <laughs> we didn't already do it. Uh, yeah, uh, aliens. Uh, yeah. The crow. Yes. It's again aliens. the crow. Uh, the game crow. over, man. Game over. Nice. nice. Where's our third oh, layout? Yeah. We only have two. Damn. Oh. I narrowed I like, it down. <laughs> I like B. I I oh, love I the like hair. The, I love the, both. I had to go with the hair. Yeah. I'm very excited. For I don't know. I, like I actually had a lot of fun doing the xenomorph in the back. Or, uh, I was going to yeah, say, awesome. that looks awesome. Fun I love fact. how you put the stitching on the Xenoscope logo on there. That's pretty fun. Fun fact. Um, I, I always Buffy, have a hard time picking bullet. because they're all so good. Um, Buffy the uh, French Bulldog was almost Ripley the French Bulldog. So, oh. Um, it was a toss. It's funny because right now it looks more like a newt. <laughs> <laughs> newt? Yeah, the little girl from Aliens, Newt. Newt. She, she does look. She's very smart. Why don't you put her in charge, man? <laughs> That's like one of my favorite lines of any movie ever. Um, I'm, not, I'm not joking. It makes me laugh every time. Was that, what's his name? Um, what's his name? Bill. Bill. Uh, Come on, Pullman? you know it. Pull, nope, Pull, not Pullman. Not Pullman. Um, Come on. Come on. Dang. Pa. Pa. pa, there you go. Damn. 
Got, uh, yeah, great, great actor. It's gone too soon. Um, Paxton, thank you. Jason, uh, anything else? Last words. Anyone want to plug anything that they're doing? Brian, I know you have a lot coming up. So I you? have a lot coming out. I'm on the road the next five weekends. See you people this weekend in Denver. We then were, Chicago. The show we bailed on. And then uh, Tupelo, Mississippi, for y'all asking me to come down in Tupelo. Uh, then San Diego Comic-Con has all these four shows going on on the weekend of Comic-Con at the Tin Roof uh, Restaurant in San Diego. Oh, uh, I will be with Marilyn Gigliotti in Raleigh, Raleigh Galaxy Con. Five day, four days of craziness. Come on out. That's just my July people. More to come. Marilyn, uh, are you also, here? next week... Next week, we drop the Clerks 3 trailer. So yes! be on the lookout next week. <laughs> Very exciting. Yeah. I'm sure you hear this all the time, but I literally like grew up on those films. Like Those films literally changed my life. So thank you, guys. Yeah, if I can fanboy for a second, El Sun was talking about the, uh, the Goth Girl DVD pack. Clerks was definitely in my, uh, I don't know, Noah Mitchell VHS pack. That, that, that was a, a constant no in the, in the VHS player. Pack. Yeah, I was no Mitchell VHS pack. Like Seven Smith, like, that, that Seven Smith films is what got me into like wanting to be a movie buff in general. And the banter you guys had was just incredible. And the fact that you slept with a dead man was just like, oh my god! <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I didn't sleep with. I didn't sleep with no dead man. She that didn't sleep with no. She didn't sleep with no dead man. It was the other lady who slept with a dead man. Sorry, <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> But no, she like she just had sex with thirty seven guys. Well, yeah, she did. <laughs> <laughs> but she oh, brings you lasagna. Actually, actually, no, I did not have sex with thirty seven guys. World, I sucked it with three. <laughs> That's right. She just blew twenty four thirty four other ones. Um, we don't know if she blew. That she might not have blown the guy she slept with. There's a whole. Do we ever confirm that? <laughs> That's true. And, you know, that true. yeah. See, we'll have to rewatch Clerks. Conversations I would love to have in a row. That, be, that is the best line. In a row. By the way, that's the wait until you hear the update. Come Clerks three. What number yeah. she's up to by then? Um, <laughs> she, she only had she only had sex with the guy she loved. So that's you know that's that is says a lot. Of, like where's the standards. question? Yeah. I'm surprised you don't have that on a t-shirt, Marilyn. I only sleep with the guys I love. Uh, you know? I might have to do no, that. I since might we're have at to do it, that. Since we're at it, where are you appearing? Where Where are you in your... Um, where are you appearing? <laughs> Marilyn. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I have a San Diego Comic-Con pass as to whether I am involved with what's going on I, honestly i have no idea i've not been i've been, not been told anything so i would hope so but i don't know i'm just gonna be honest right there um but i will be in raleigh north carolina with brian and the gang um so looking forward to that uh so that's the immediate uh future anyway and i'll see you i will see you in san diego zenoscope zebiscope aka zenoscope will be in San Diego at booth 2301, which is our regular booth inside of Hall BC. Uh, we're right up front. So if you if you don't want to wade through all the crazy, nice. you, walk, you walk inside the hall and you see our booth and you see us and we're giving away a MetaQuest 2 VR headset. VR head. <laughs> we're giving away a, Meta, a MetaQuest Whoa, 2 VR head. A VR head? Um, <laughs> You may want to fix that. Um, no, I want a VR head. head. VR head. We're also giving away Apple. Oh, wait. As long as it's like a 3D Ralph. Yeah, you that better wear V. You better make sure you have the VR protection too while you're at it. We all want to my 37 VR heads. Um, uh, 34. Full circle. So we will uh, be giving away a lot of stuff at the booth. For free, you don't even have to buy anything to get stuff. This week. But for free, we're also doing Christmas in July in San Diego on Saturday. So if you guys are coming to Comic Con, you're going to see all most of us there. Sun won't make it there, I don't think. Sun, will you? What are you doing coming up? <clears throat> what am I doing? When What's... coming up? Do you have you guys are having you fun? Plug. I'm hooked up to the VR. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> don't tell people that. <laughs> Please don't tell anybody that. That's not true. She's not part of the VR. Don't ask them. <laughs> Actually, that might not be uh, we, virtual signings. And you, you put on the headset, and it's like, wow, I'm actually at the convention. It's like you can yeah, give give people the, the full experience if you can't make it to, to San Diego. Um, <laughs> put that in the hashtag ideas file. Anything else we are plugging right now? Anybody else? No. Crystal says no, nothing. I don't care about that. <laughs> well, you can follow Crystal. She does her Twitch. Uh, I don't know if you've been doing Twitch lately, but uh, not after the brain surgery. But I did get a new surgery. camera. I'm not as blurry as I used to be. What mm -hmm. up? <laughs> well, you can find Crystal at Crystal Star X. Is that right? X. Yes. So there you go. And Sun at Sun Kumanaki. And that is all I got for tonight. That's Any right. last words from anybody else for today? Yes, Casey. You can watch me and Noah's show if you want. <laughs> oh, yeah. Coffee. Hello. <laughs> Don't sound so sad about it. <laughs> you, kids, you kids have really been steeping a very long time in that cup of coffee. <laughs> You your dad's out. your dad's in the room, no less. That's <laughs> awkward. They have clothes on. I'm I'm wearing wearing my, yeah, wear, wear, I'm wearing a shirt. How are they clothes? How do you know that's not just necklaces? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> <my God. laughs> I'm a very good Where's Waldo player. Trust me. <laughs> Which I see two Waldos. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we watch Casey <laughs> and Noah uh, as they go through our graphic novels and review some of our re recent graphic novels or our past graphic novels. Okay, how so, like okay you review graphic novels? Do you say any of them suck? They can't. No, no. can't. No, all <laughs> Zenoscope so. comics sucking. Ne it's ne an, not happening. What is with what is? It's wrong? just it's just an infomercial. How do you think <laughs> you say any of them suck? Actually, I would like to take this quick moment. Suck. <laughs> I, I do want to All double back on some comments from Monday's episode. I was saying how I don't think I'm surprised that, that there aren't more highway pirates that are, you know, stealing stuff from Amazon trucks and whatnot. But my sister informed me that that's just the plot of the first Fast and Furious movie. So I, I'm sorry, but I still think that we should be robbing trucks on the highway. Thank you, Noah. Uh, Your welcome. Honor, I give you exhibit number four <laughs> in the criminal prosecution it's, of Noah. It's only if I get caught. The um, mastermind of all these Amazon so, trucks being stolen. I'm like well, top dollar. I'm 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 sitting there burning eyeballs and thinking of what cargo I can steal. He's coming for you. He's coming for you. Okay. Um, Where's my well, package? Where's cool. my package? Get that in two days. <laughs> Very angry. Um, it's been real, guys. Yeah. We will see you Love next month for Aliens, on... which I swear we've already done. I wish I had a date on hand. Do we have the date? I think it's the 27th of July, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, same time. Uh, yes, same it is, because I will be in the air at that point. So what we're going to be doing, by the way, is we're going to be going live uh, for Aliens and then immediately following Aliens, we're going to go right into our uh, preview beach con night where we'll be selling some brand new San Diego Comic Con exclusives to everybody out there. So that'll be on the 27th of July. Beach Con. There it is. No typos, I hope. Um nice. If you, if you can't make it to San Diego, we're doing a beach con for all. Yark. So immediate, so immediately following uh, movie night, movie club, we'll be doing a preview night beach con. That's so you're said, staying longer. What's that? So you're, sta you're staying longer in uh, San Diego? No, no. That's our live stream. We're going to be doing that from the studio, the, Zen the Zebescope Studios. Got it. Oh, okay. So we'll... We'll finish movie club and then we'll cut right to Jason Candela's salesman extraordinary. Okay. Uh, I will be in a new location then for our aliens review. I will be already be in Raleigh early that morning. So I'll be broadcasting from the room. Hopefully. Uh, from the, or I from landed the around. 
I land at around 6.30 that evening. There you go. All you autograph hounds, be at the airport 6.30 that evening. <laughs> Do it. 6.30. Um, mm. All right, guys. Well, it's been real. And thank you for joining us for Movie Club. Till next time. We'll see Bye. you. Bye. 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 Bye.